And then also you, you, can't, you can't tell other people's kids not to do stuff. Right. So you've got to kind of like be loudly like, hey, he's climbing up on the utility pole and kind of <laughs> hope that somebody does something. Well, back in the day, you could yell at people's kids. And I think that that needs to come back. And that's what's holding back this country. Yeah. Yell at other people's kids. Long story short, Hugh Jackman plays the part of uh, Gary Hart. And he was, he was amazing. And I had a really fun scene where we were tailing him. We were chasing him down this alley. And he's like the nicest guy ever. But he's a big guy. He's like 6'4". And he, he's ripped. And we went down the alley, and, he, and his character's mad at our character, and he just turned around and looked at us. And for half a second, I was like, oh, that's Wolverine. And, <laughs> and I, I literally, I legit got scared. And he's a big guy, you know? So what's funny in this scene is, is the, as a reporter, I have like a notebook, and I dropped it. And after the screening, we went to the Toronto Film Festival and all these actors are coming up to me. I love the choice you made. I love the choice you made to drop the notebook. I go, no, dude, that was real. I was like. <laughs> a Rolex? Yes, it is. I finally bought one 25 years in this business. Is it white gold or stainless? I don't know what it is. Is it heavy? No. Then it's stainless. Oh, is that what it is? I well, just... thank you. Thank you for taking my watch down a notch. I finally felt successful. You see this? <laughs> you wouldn't say that if I had brown or black hair. I guarantee you. Blonde hair, you'd be over here giving me your watch. <laughs> I love the racist white guy thing. A bunch of racist white guys. Uh, they came out of the forest. And they were just going, Trump, Trump, Trump. It's like, where were all these racist white guys the last two elections when they could have voted against the black guy? They were fine. Oh, I don't mind the black guy. But this white lady, we got to stop her. Gonna take a four wheeler. So your Christian background is is part of the the show. Or yes, and I episodes. wanted to talk to you about Jesus after this. Well, I, <laughs> not, the only reason why I bring it up is simply you are the whitest person I've ever seen around. Yes, <laughs> served me well. I've never worked for anything. Yeah, I was born on a yacht. It's just all been downhill. I don't even mean it in I don't mean it in in a, uh, a genetic way. I mean like I do. You, <laughs> I'm talking full on white privilege. <laughs> It I was seems... stunned when I first heard about white privilege. I had no, no idea what it was. It's like, hey, everybody doesn't get to do this? <laughs> it seems as if the sun Pulling has never touched Pulling up job interviews you. right as I get out of the car. You're hired! <laughs> Go home, we'll see you tomorrow! You never saw weird science, how creepy these nerds are? All these cameras on your phone, all of that. The people go on Ancestry.com. Why would you send your saliva into the internet? Why would you do that? <laughs> Why don't you just go to the Illuminati and help them build your robot replacement? <laughs> Being a mother is the hardest job out Most there. difficult job Most in difficult. the... Oprah said that. Oprah said that, yeah. Has, yeah. That, has your opinion on that, on that phrase, changed at all since, since no. you've had a kid? <laughs> no. <laughs> it's not the most difficult job on the planet. It just isn't. <laughs> Dude, I did roofing in July. I almost, as a redhead, I almost died. There's people, there's people that work on like oil. What was that movie that guy made? The oil, the, the fucking, you know, they there drill will be blood. oil. What is it? There will be blood. With Not the... there will be blood. The, uh, out in the ocean, they would drill. I can never remember the names. Deepwater. Mark Wahlberg yeah, was Deepwater it. Horizon, yeah. yeah, yeah. Those guys were working on, on an oil rig. The fucking thing blows up. <laughs> They're on fire. They gotta jump into water that's on fire. <laughs> Salty water into their wounds. You gotta swim out of that oil and fire and then tread water. Praying to God that the Coast Guard is gonna get there before the sharks do. <laughs> now talk to me about a toddler. Oh, he was so fussy today. I just, he wouldn't eat his peas. Yeah, and just the level of reward that is, you know, as annoying as a kid is, like, they smile at you and it's over. It's over. So, I mean, you, you don't get that, you know, working on an oil rig when your buddy's greasy face lights up. <laughs> yeah, you know what? It really is all worth it. At some point, I was going to make a point here. That's why I keep looking at here, and I just realize I'm blocking myself out of the camera. I love that you have the jib camera for this, like it's an action movie. Let's, let's, let's swoop in at these two guys sitting in these unbelievably small chairs. I literally feel like I'm going to fall onto the floor. This is insane. You really went all out with the audience, though. They got full-size adult chairs. <laughs> Are these, like, from the 20s before they had, like, horse tranquilizers in our food when everybody was, like, five foot one? 
Yeah. What did you say about the military that got people so mad? Or this one guy so mad? I was mad? just saying, like, yeah, the guy who flies the fighter jet, okay, and has missiles shot at him, that guy's a hero. However, if you're the guy that, like, points in the direction that the plane takes off in... <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, I shouldn't have to wear a mask. I don't want to wear a mask. I don't buy it. And then there are people that... Um... I love those people. What? Yeah, you like the people that flip out? Yeah, don't wear it. Yeah. Don't wear it. Go kill yourself. It's awesome. Because I have to be honest with you, I know a lot of people died from COVID, but I'm starting to see the traffic come back, and uh, I selfishly thought I wish it killed a few more. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So Netflix, yes, I am. second season, the deepest couch in sports entertainment. A lot of people think that uh, they're uncomfortable with my, uh, my um, elevation. Are you uncomfortable with it? No, I just see all of your insecurities. <laughs> <laughs> your giant go. desk. <laughs> There you are. Look at Billy. How are you? You look like a fucking prize. I get my stupid headphones to work here. Something that'll work. Let me see if these ones will work. Hold they, on a second. No, they work good. My headphones aren't working for me, though. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's about me, Nick. It's not about <laughs> you here. Here we go. Dude is knocking it out of the park. He's one of my favorites. Here is Bill Burr. Ah, ha, ha. Look Jimmy. At, look at you. How are you? Oh, it's I good. I love that you did the audience applaud. Applause for everybody. Yeah, there he is. Come on. Keep it going for him. You just had the baby, right? Yeah, a little uh, Friday morning. Friday morning. Friday morning. I did. I did. My wife did. I, right, didn't, yeah. uh, I didn't do anything. I felt unbelievably useless. <laughs> I was in total panic mode. When I dropped her off at the emergency room, she goes, all right, you got to go park the car down in the, in, the, in the spot. And I swear to God, I was in such fight or flight. I was, I was driving down there. This voice in my head just said, just keep going. Just keep going. Just drive away. Which of course I wouldn't, but I started laughing. That's Isn't not... that like a Bruce Springsteen song about that? Going yeah. out to get cigarettes and you just, there's something hilarious about people abandoning their family. Where like, I just can't imagine like the hell that you would be in to do that move. But just knowing you were going to do it, like the level of excitement that you would have before like, okay, I'm going to, uh. <laughs> gonna go get some cigarettes. <laughs> I'm never gonna see you people again. Your mother-in-law. All of this stuff is over. Fly a lot, and there's this whole new thing of generation of people that take their socks and their shoes off on the plane. You got to look at their smelly feet, and then they'll literally stand up and they will walk into a commercial airline bathroom. Yeah, use it, and then walk and sit back down again. That's not right. Yeah, if I was a dictator, those people would be eliminated. <laughs> A lot coming from the Hillary Clinton camp that Trump is bad for children. And they had a lot of ads that said, you know, children are watching this guy. Oh, we uh, all know talk. that children five and six years old are always tuning into the debates. <laughs> Taking notes. That's what I did when I was a kid. I'll never forget that. <laughs> so uh, this well, is very like, we're very like, you know, you wouldn't know that we like each other. Let's, let's try to tone it down. Here. No, no, I'm not. I'm just... <laughs> No, I, I don't what happened. I you came right at me just saying my theory stunk. I'm just here to promote a cartoon. I'm a dancing <laughs> monkey today. I'm trying to be a good guy. I want people to like me and watch the show here. And you're coming at me. I don't know anything about hoop. I'm a five foot ten inch white guy. This, uh, what is this? Rock 100.5. Mm -hmm. This is the worst interview I've ever done. And he's wearing Stetson cologne or something. It's just really over overpowering How you, doing? you know what he looks like he looks like the first guy who gets his ass kicked in a steven seagal movie <laughs> no. the background guy behind the uh the, the big kingpin why don't you handle this <laughs> like there's a danger to buying that car that big yellow they see that big yellow prancing pony and they just come out they come up out of the manhole covers all these gold diggers <laughs> Like, like a zombie movie. <laughs> and that is a gold digger magnet. And they are so good at it, they can look and tell if it's rented or not. They know where to look for the sticker. I don't know how to do that. <laughs> oh, there we go. No, but now this is like the ego one. Now I'm going to be sitting above you. Yeah, you got to no, come man. with two. It's fine. It's fine. Sir, the one, the one comedy through line that's working here is me shitting on this chair. Why would you take that from me? This is, you're just totally going against the grain. I understand it, but you got on camera, so I think you get paid, even though this is online. <laughs> I gotta tell you how I discovered you. I, you know, I, I do all my whole career to you. <laughs> yeah. I was, no, 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 I no. was struggling until no, 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 no. Bobby Lee no, discovered no, I, me. Oh, no, no, not, not discover you in terms of like, you d did it on your own, obviously, but no, in terms of I, my awareness of you. Oh. Can I tell you that story? Oh, no, no? I remember it was a big day in my career. Bobby Lee is finally aware of me. 
<laughs> Am I on Bobby Lee's radar? See, this is what he's gonna. This do. is when things start to happen. <laughs> I'm not gonna allow this to happen. Reversal. I'm not, yeah, I'm not gonna allow this to happen. Reversal. Yeah, yeah. I'm just gonna plug away. You know what I mean? Listen, you can talk to him all you want. <laughs> I can hear it. <laughs> Bill, how are you? What's going on? Oh, thank you. Thank you, all Isn't seven nice? of you, and the four Kevin Hart's. Yeah. <laughs> Is he in the black section of the crowd? That's yes. what it seems like. They may have moved up to the middle. Progress. <laughs> I like it. It was kind of being slightly dubious of a comedy competition, though. So you, don't, you don't have any confidence. No. What, you what? can't get up there and just do your dick jokes better <laughs> no, than other people? No, no, I can't. I feel, I feel like it's not the right way to go about it. All you have to do is be louder than someone else. Oh, I can do and that. Slap your hands around. <laughs> You're guaranteed to make the final. <laughs> I built a whole career on that. Every time I go into a store and I see something, they go, can we get a phone number? Watching somebody give them the phone number. Why would you do that? Yeah. I always give the same. I, mine is all area codes. They go, what's your phone number? I'm like, 323-818-2125. <laughs> We've never taken a break in the middle of a, of a gas station. I know. I had all this momentum going. Now i got to start all over again. <laughs> go ahead. Go to the card. <laughs> See this? We won game one. Here comes the second of the double header. The Conspiracy theory has gotten a bad name where now it's 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 become synonymous with like moronic thought like if you into conspiracy theory if you think like the bankers need to be stopped then you also think the moon is made out of cheese <laughs> and you think that there's shape shift shifters and like lizard people you know they just try to knock it down it's like this country started with a conspiracy that's how it came we won <laughs> so they're considered heroes and rebels you yeah. know uh, whatever you Re saying? revolutionaries but yeah. if they lost they would be hanged for conspi for yeah. conspiring. Yeah. yeah, it's not it's, like it spontaneously happened. Yeah, like all of a sudden everybody just picked up a gun and started shooting at the British. You know, they sat around. <laughs> they said they planned they it planned out. They planned it out. Yeah. I'm kind of getting tired of these people. What are you <laughs> it's funny when you said we won. I'm like, did we really win? But I understand what you're saying. I understand what you're saying. Now, oh, is that that African American thing? Yeah. <laughs> or whatever, incognito. You're an enigma. What, because I make a pie? No, you know what it is? You're not a good listener. You, you've known me for 10 years. You have no idea who I am. It's all about comedy with you and moving up the ladder and pushing people out. <laughs> now, is this, are you getting out of an existing house? In a, a, no, I'm going know? from a one-bedroom apartment, and I figured I'd finally go out and buy a damn house yeah. and yeah. not have to deal with, you know, some jerk living above me or below me. All right. You know? Yeah. Do my own little thing. Get sure. my little 12-gauge, get a bunch of cans of tuna. Get ready for the apocalypse. That's what I want to do. But is that, were you, were this you, was, were you this funnier was, or was it just you enjoyed the difficulty more? I mean, I, do, I don't know if it makes you funnier because it's a harder show to do or it's more. I don't either. Yeah. I don't either. But I will say that what I liked about it was was that, uh, that you know, just that those years where you just like, you, you know, so much of your stand-up career is just one impossible situation <laughs> after another. And you're just standing there trying to do the math. Like, how the fuck yeah. am I going to get these people? We don't have a microphone. Is yeah. that going to be a problem? Can you do 10 minutes while the band changes? Yeah. Like, no, I can't. Uh, they're just going to take the instruments off and on the stage. <laughs> no, that's not Oh, yeah, works. and as you're doing it, they're coming in there tuning up. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> done gigs in hallways. Yeah. Hallways, areas that met in a hallway, cafeterias during at like 1 in the afternoon afternoon sure the college kids have no idea there's going to be a show and they just go we have a comedian his name's bill burr here yeah. he is and then you just walk up there and have to do an hour sure just an hour i know of humiliation i would always say to myself i'd always say in an hour and one minute this is going to be over <laughs> and i'm going to be in my car driving away and that's what i would do and it, and, 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 and the part that i hated was the waiting to go on yeah i still do it, I once still you go like on it. yeah it's the, the hourglass has been turned over yeah the sand's starting to fall and every second you're up there whatever hit you take that's one less one you got to take yeah and no just, it's true i used it's to always true. call it my call College agent afterwards flipping out, going, I'm fucking done with these things. I'm never fucking doing this again. I don't give a shit. And he'd be like, All right, all right, all right. And then he, he knew I needed the money. And then he'd call me up and be like, He'd be like, Billy, uh, Scott Bass. That was my agent. Scott Bass calling. I know you said you're not going to do this, but I, I, I do have a nooner. I'm going to build around it. And, you know, by then I'd be at home. And I cooled off. It was a couple weeks later from being on the road. And I, the rent was coming. I needed the money. And he would be, he'd be like, all right, it's going to pay 700 bucks. It's like in the middle of Iowa for 700 bucks, all inclusive.